Hey folks, just so you know, my name's Bill Wagner and I am starting a channel for reasons completely unknown to me about keeping a nice house. And I'm going to look into the things of many, many years, a number I don't wish to give as its enormity might be inconceivable to some, of homeowner experience, my failures, my successes, and things I've learned along the way. So I'm going to kind of go over, since I work from home, and go over a little bit about the things I've learned in my very first episode about appliances. So I'm going to turn the camera around. You'll hear me speaking from the back, but I hope you enjoy this. And my camera work is terrible, but uh, I'm doing this on cell phone. So I got what I got. So... I'd like to introduce you to my brand new used dishwasher. I had my friend Gary come over and install this dishwasher. He got it from a house. He's a handyman. He was doing a demo and a kitchen remodel on said house. He brought this sucker over to replace my broken dishwasher. So why not fix the broken dishwasher? Well, let me explain. Number one, inside a dishwasher, there are lots of hoses, nooks, and crannies that can cause problems. It's not an electronics thing, but if you look inside a dishwasher, you see the little spinny things? Yes, that's a technical term. Those little spinny things there, if there's gumming up in them, it would cause them not to spin around. And so what would cause them to gum up? Well, I'm in rural Michigan and I have well water and the well water where I'm at is very heavily contaminated by bacterial iron. And bacterial iron is iron plus some kind of, of course, bacteria, and it can be very slimy, icky, gross, and gum things up. Now, I could have gone out and bought a base model dishwasher for three, four hundred bucks, including installation. But Gary was working on the house. She was getting rid of it, brought it on over here. We installed it. He installed it. I've done a dishwasher install before, but I have a nerve condition in my hands and I just can't do that kind of delicate work anymore. Wish I could. Um, and it's not that hard. You connect the drain, you connect the hot water, cold water, go down to the basement, make sure you know which pipes are going in, and you run and plug it in or connect it electrically. And away you go. And nowadays dishwashers usually have two or three little spinny things to get every nook and cranny. But why go used? Why not go new, latest, state of the art? Because that crap breaks. Let me give you an example. This one has a computer on it. And all dishwashers now have computers and have to meet efficiency standards. And those efficiency standards add burden to the machine itself. In other words, you're taking a device, an electronic device, and you're putting it in high temps, lots of squishy water. Yes, my cat Zeus wishes to say hi. And debris and dirt. And those kind of things can break easily and are very hard to repair. You got pop open where the circuit board is, replace the circuit board, replace some, maybe update some software. Newer dishwashers are becoming connected to cell phone, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Why? You never needed it before. The dishwasher's basic functions have not changed. The spindle things go round and round and round, squirt, squirt, squirt. The soap door opens. The spindle things squirt the soap. The soap gets into the water, blasts the dishes, stuff comes off, and that big black thing at the bottom, that's your heater. It doesn't matter what model, brand, or whatever you get from your dishwasher. It's the components within it. And so with all these new technologies, all these new requirements, these dishwashers nowadays, the biggest problem is, and this is with all appliances, the biggest problem is, is the complexity of the computer inside and to keep it at the price point 
the manufacturers cheapen the product inside. So what used to be metal is now plastic and it breaks easier. So, can I find an old timey dishwasher that would last me 20, 30 years like my dad had? Jesus, he got his in 19, 1984. I bought him a new one in 2016, 1984 to 2016, because it was getting a leak on the side. And if I was smarter back then, I would just replace the seal. If they still make the seal, I don't know. It's probably made out of lead or something. Like, give me cancer. Who knows what's wrong with that? But these dishwashers, why buy new? Because the parts inside are not designed to last 20, 30 years. So you're going to spend $500 on a new dishwasher, and 10 years later, you're going to be slapping a new one in there. And that's the problem. The better problem, better thing is, is when people buy houses, and I'll never understand this. People buy houses, they'll look and they'll say, well, the dishwasher doesn't match the refrigerator and doesn't match the stove. And this one's got a neat little Wi-Fi feature on it. I'm swapping this out and getting something new that matches all the other stuff. So they'll spend $500 for color coordination and leave that dishwasher out on the street. You see somebody doing that or doing a house or a kitchen remodel, go up and ask them for the device. And while you're there, ask them, does it work okay? Any problems with it? Any leaks? Any problems like that? Does it smell bad? Does it, does it explode, catch fire, open portals to other dimensions? Who knows? The answer is probably no. It's probably working fine. And you'll get five years out of it. Another reason to buy used where I'm at, rust water. We have a lot of iron in our water and the iron clogs up the system. And yes, it can be cleaned out. It's a challenge. It's a pain. It destroys the appliance. Why am I going to spend a lot of money on an appliance that's not going to stop that from happening? Might as well get used. Go there, pay 50 bucks. Here, give me your dishwasher, throw it in the back of a U-Haul, take it home, install it. You've just saved a ton of money and a ton of resources. And you're helping the environment by not filling up a landfill. That's a win too, I guess. Now, in regards to coordination. I want to show you something. I host parties so for quite a while. And you can see here I've got stainless steel stove, uh, my air fryer, which I got for 10 bucks, another used purchase, and it is amazing. Get an air fryer for the love of God. I got these cool pots and pans at Ollie's for like 78 bucks. And then I've got this LG refrigerator that I know is about four years old, so six years left on it. And it's probably a $2,000 refrigerator, whatever, stainless steel, white cabinets, and then this white dishwasher. I've known people to gut the appliances out of their entire kitchen because black, stainless, white, all together, you're wasting money. But if you really have to do it, post your appliances on a website. Don't have somebody haul it out. I mean, if you get a rebate from somebody, great. Get that rebate and take it if you think that's better than what you can make on the market. But post these things for sale. This is a basic stove, 400 bucks brand new. Guess what? I would buy this in a heartbeat used. If I saw one used, I'd buy it to replace this if this ever broke. Stoves are basic technology. It doesn't take a whole lot of computing for electronic heating elements to heat up compared to where the dial is. It's not that hard. Does it take a lot? New stoves come out with all this new fancy stuff because they need some way to one-up the other. And none of that makes the food taste any better, if we're all honest with each other. Now, I got one more thing to show you, and it's my dryer. And it's running right now. And you can't hear it run right now because over here, I fixed it. All right, here's my dryer. Here's my fixy stuff. A dryer base model, likely to be 400 bucks plus delivery. That I, I would say that with tax. 
This model's probably 10 years old. So what went wrong? Well, it started sounding like there was a dying large animal inside the drum every time I turned it on. And that's a problem. So I thought a bearing was going in the drum because I didn't actually know what these things looked like on the inside and I was very wrong. I would pop it, but it's running. So essentially, inside one, and you can Google this, YouTube it, whatever, you have a drum with a belt around it. At the bottom is the motor, an electric motor, and the belt goes around two, and then the drum sits on two wheels in the rear, and then the drum goes around some uh, things at the bottom, and then those things are hooked up to the electric motor. They turn over here is the heat compression, the heat thing um, where the gas goes and it heats the clothing inside. All of these wonderful technical terms, trust me, they're all on Wikipedia, do wicked do's and gadgets and gizmos. I ordered the parts on Amazon. So to have somebody come out here, look at this fix, it probably would have cost me about $300. This dryer isn't worth $300 anywhere. It's an older dryer, it's a base model, and it doesn't have all the cool little gizmos in it. Well, guess what? To fix it cost me 20 bucks, and my friend Gary Ponky came over, he helped me disassemble the dryer, which I knew how to do. I was scared to do it because I thought I'd blow the house up or something. Very basic, basic machine. Easy to fix. Parts were 20 bucks on Amazon. Got them, plopped them in. I thought I need my girlfriend to come down here and help me install the drum. Nope, just lift it up, put it on the wheels, took the, the new belt, put it around the motor, reattach the panels and now I have a very quiet dryer that's probably going to last me another 10 to 20 years. Here's the problem. Everybody's got this latest and greatest model of dryer out there. I've owned five. I've owned everything from the base model all the way up to a thousand dollar dryer. They don't do anything different. None of them do. All it does is regulate how fast it spins and how hot the inside gets, which is the th same thing that dryers have been doing since the dawn of time. The sales guy will say, oh, it'll do this and sense that, and it senses how the sensor never works. Use the timer. I'm using the sensor because I learned that if I put it by very dry, it just does the same thing as the timer, and it, it's a little bit shorter, so I'm not spending as much money. Uh, and even if the sensor did work, who cares? Just set a time. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour for a full load to dry in a dryer. My dad's dryer's from 1984. The buttons have broke on it. It still runs. It's a very simple machine. And without computers and sensors, they work great. And they last forever. So when you're out shopping for an appliance like this again consider used if you got to get new get the base model or something commercial grade and here's why i say that commercial grades are designed to last they don't have the bells and whistles they just have the basic features provide the same basic drying options but they don't break down as frequently and they're usually a lot cheaper than everybody else's dryer. Another thing, when you're looking at a dryer and you're looking at how to fix it, the more complicated this is, the more, more stuff will break on it. So don't use that as a guide for quality. Stay simple. I had an LG washing machine, which we'll take a look at mine in a minute. It was the greatest washer I ever had. I had to replace the GE because the people who designed it probably are still coloring in books. The, the one I replaced was top-end model. I got two steps down from LG. The thing was perfect. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But basically, 
all dryers dry the same. They really, really, really do. It's the amount they can fit inside and how much they can dry that counts. If you do your drying properly, put the right clothes in at the right time, you're not going to have an issue with your dryer damaging clothes or something. Now coming over here to the washing machine, you see I have this high efficiency top down washing machine and you can see the ring of rust around it. Welcome to rural Michigan and our rusty state. Um, this is a base model washing machine, basic whirlpool, simple washer. It's top down. I learned a hard lesson. Do not buy front loading and there's two reasons why. The reason you don't buy front loading, number one, is when the thing is on the front here and you're pulling tangled wet clothes out, it's going to fall down here to the dirty basement floor. Yes, you can keep a basement floor clean unless you have a cat. God help you if you do. But stuff falls on the floor, kind of negates the purpose of the wash. That is one big issue. Um, the other one is, it's the weight and the filter. With it sitting the way it does, the biggest problem I had was number one, clothes were spinning this way and rubbing against essentially a rubber version of this plastic seal. You see, here there is no chance that the water is going to flow forward. So if you think of this as a front facing, let's pretend we're looking at the front, get rid of the agitator. There would be a rubber seal here. Well, closer as a spin are gonna rub against that and it wears out. And I had one get holes in it after a year. The other problem I had is the drain kept getting clogged up with stuff that should never have fit down the drain. So there's a filter in the drain. It caught all of this stuff, plugging it up, giving me an error code, making me call people to come and disassemble a very compli complex version of this. Now, I learned to do the disassembly myself, and it wasn't terrible, but I had to do it every month. I have not had to disassemble this in eight months. The top-loading LG never disassembled. Worked great and was amazing. If you do have to disassemble this, it's fairly simple again. You pop this, pop this out, and then there are screws on the back to access things. Um, not that hard to do. Pretty easy to fix the mechanics on it, and the weight is distributed better. So, like in the dryer, where the, the main weight-bearing spindles are in the back and on the front of the door, so back and front, same thing with a front-loading washing machine, except the weight gets heavier and the spindles warp faster. You should not have to replace any appliance after five to ten years. And that's because they all do the same thing. This washing machine does the exact same thing as a $1,000 washing machine. Oh, that $1,000 washing machine might have more writing along here, but all it does is it's regulating. All a washing machine does is fill with water, soapy water, agitate and spin. So it'll spin one way, it'll spin the other, it'll spin the other, and it'll do, 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 do in there and make cool little noises like that. And that's all it does. And then it spins super fast to get the clothes as dry as possible and then it's done and you've got your washing machine i have never in 20 sorry uh, how long have i owned a house is 15 years 15 years as a house owner maybe a little longer no it is longer 18 years as a household owner god i'm old um i've had one two three four now five washing machines all for moving and I bought two of them and they were all over the place in terms of quality and uh, price when I first bought my first washing machine trust me I was poor and I was buying bare bones I have 
never noticed a difference in the quality of wash that comes out of this washing machine versus an expensive one. You don't need expensive. A basic model does 99.9% .9 of everything you're doing. Now you're probably thinking, Bill, I get food stains. My dog decided to itch his backside on my dress. I don't know how to clean this. In the few things that you really can't get out with the techniques I'm about to show you, you could go to a dry cleaner. And if you did that every time you had one of those issues, guess what? You'd still be making out getting either used or basic model appliances. And that is with the most complex piece of cleaning equipment I have ever used. And that is the Home Depot bucket. So what I do is, is because of the high iron content, when the brine filter in my water softener stops cleaning the water softener and I start to get rust in the water, I take this wonderful thing called out. Or you can use iron out. Either way, both of them work pretty good. I like iron out because it works on everything, not just laundry. You take a cup of this, you take a cup of white bright out one or the other don't mix them. i'll start mixing stuff or if it's more of a non-rust based stain you use a cup of bleach or if you don't like bleach oxy you pour it into here you fill this up with hot water to about here you make sure you have a second bucket because like my clothes when they start getting rusty and i have in the brine pit, that's one load of wash that I have to de-rustify. Technical term there. Fill it up with hot water, put the clothes in, let them sit overnight, take them out, put them in here for a rinse and spin, put them in here to dry. Your clothes, white clothes, will be incredibly white. Easy peasy. Very affordable, easy to do. That's it for today. Tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about mopping and vacuuming. And I've got some cool tips on some cool products that are out there, things you need and things you don't need. See you then.